So happy you tuned in with us on one of our Sunday worship services. Um, today, we are going to do some spiritual warfare. I've been seeking God this last week or so on this message, and the Lord has given me a message for you and your family. But before we dive into today's teaching, I, I can't ignore um, what's happening right now in California. Um, we have really some devastations that are happening right now with the fires. Um, I just took a look at the map of California. Um, the last time I seen, there's over 28 fires right now burning in the state of California. People's homes are being destroyed. Uh, people's lives have been lost because of the fire. I just heard a story this, this last week. Um, a fire hit a town and it got so bad, a group of people to escape the fire, they jumped into a local pond. And they waited in the pond until the firefighters came. And firefighters, I want to pray for the firefighters. They've been working tirelessly. Um, you, you even see pictures of them um, trying to sleep on the ground, trying to sleep in the middle of, a, uh, middle of the woods, just trying to get some rest. So if we can, before we start today's teaching, I want to pray for California for the fires. I want to pray for the firefighters. And I want to declare victory over your home right now. So wherever you're at, if you're in your home, you're at your workplace, we have our women's home here today. It's good to see the women's home in today's service. Love you ladies so much. Let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father, we come before you, God. And we lift up, yes, our state, the state of California. And all these fires right now that are taking place, we command those fires to cease. We command those fires to stop. In the name of Jesus, we cancel these fires out of our state, even out of Oregon, out of Washington. Father, and even these fires, we see them in the physical. I pray, God, you will even turn it around in the spiritual realm, that we will see the fire of God through the state of California. And Father, we lift up our firefighters right now. Give them wisdom. Give them strength right now, God. Give them strength to continue fighting these fires, Lord. Give the captains wisdom on what to do. Father, we thank you, Lord, you would give the family strength and peace. Even the families that were lost during these fires, you would bring these families strength. You would bring them comfort during these times, God. And Lord, as we get ready to, to dive into your word today, I speak a blessing over every house right now that's watching in the name of Jesus. We declare victory over every house that's watching. We declare victory over every child and teenager, young adult that's watching. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, speak through me today. Not my will, not my words. Let your words be spoken today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone shout. Amen. Amen. Well, I love you guys so much. I want to dive right into this word. If you have your Bible... Um, get your Bibles ready. Get a notepad ready. Um, it's always a good thing when anybody is ministering, you want to write some things down. Pastor Marco says it this way, the things that you write down, you own it. And the things that you own, now you can teach them. I love that statement. The things you write down, you own them. The things that you own, now you can teach other people. You know, I was praying the other day about this message and I was just going on a walk. I was actually riding my bike. And I was praying. I felt some of the weight of what's been happening to our country, the division we see in different cities, the warfare that we're seeing in families right now. This, this last week, myself, I did three funerals. I did two funerals of young adults that were in their 20s. Then I did another funeral of, of John Pena. He's a member of our church. In a week, I did three funerals. So when I was riding my bike, I was just kind of down, and I was thinking about what the enemy is trying to do, and the Lord stopped me. I, 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 had, I was on my bike, and I pulled over and said, God, what do I do? The Lord told me this. I want you to cancel the enemy's plans. And I want you to start declaring God's will. And I said, cancel the enemy's plan. And I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, I've given you authority. I've given you authority. And I heard it so clear. And God told me, I've given you authority. 
to cancel the enemy's plans and to declare God's will. And today as I'm teaching, as you're at home and even our women's home, I'm going to get you ladies and at home, I'm going to get you guys involved in this teaching because we're saying it right now that the enemy's plans are canceled in the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord a big shout of praise right now? You know what? Let's just do that right now. I want you to repeat after me. You're at your home right now. Repeat. Say this, women's home, repeat. The enemy's plans are canceled in the name of Jesus. What the enemy meant for harm, God will turn it around for good. I declare God's will over my life. And the enemy's plans are canceled. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. I want you to write this powerful statement down. Write this down. And again, the notes are on the app. Man, it's such a great tool. If you go on your app right now, um, you'll see sermon notes. We even have fill in the blanks today. You could fill in the blanks. This is a great tool. Write this statement down. And here's the message. Here's the title. Write this down. Here's the title. Cancel and declare. Today's title is this. Cancel and declare. We can route, here's a powerful statement. We can route demons through our declarations. I'm going to say that again. We can route demons through our declarations. Pastor, what does the word route mean? What are you talking about? Look at the word route. This is what it means. A disorderly retreat of defeated troops. How many know the devil is defeated? The devil has been defeated. He was defeated when Jesus was on the cross. How many are thankful what Jesus did on the cross? We can rout demons. This means I could retreat a defeated troops. That means the enemy. This is what rout means. Defeat and cause to retreat in disorder. You and I have authority to rout demons into a place where they belong, a place of defeat. And how do we do that? It's by declaring God's will. And I'm going to teach you how to do that today. Here's the last definition of rout. It means this, to put to flight. To put to flight. We could literally put thousands of demons to flight. We could literally walk into a city. We could walk into a house. We could walk down a neighborhood and we could tell the demons they need to go. And because of the authority God has given us as believers, but this is the thing, we don't understand the authority we're walking in right now. We don't understand it. And I want you to write this down. I want to answer this question for a minute. How do we cancel the enemy's plans and declare God's will? How do we cancel, how many want to cancel the devil's plans? How do we know that there's devil's plans right now? Man, look at a few of these stats really quick. Divorce is up 34% right now from this same time last year. Divorce is up 34% and right now I'm going to cancel the spirit of divorce I cancel it right now and I speak unity. I declare that marriages will not end the divorce. What God has brought together, let man not separate. Can I get an amen? amen? The devil's plans are trying to go forward. Divorce is up 34%. Look at this one. 75% of teens who are raised in church, they don't return to church after high school. 75% of teenagers that go to church, that are raised in church, when they leave high school, they don't come back to church. There's an enemy's plan for our children. And a little bit later, we're going to say that as well. We're going to cancel out every plan for your child. If you got a kid right now that's not serving God, how many have a kid right now that's not serving God? Women's home. I see hands. How many at home right now? 
You got a child that's not serving God. Raise your hands. Say, that's me, pastor. My son, my daughter is not serving God. We're going to cancel that out because your kids are going to serve God. How do we know the enemy's plans are trying to go forward? Look at this stat. Nearly 800,000 people, nearly 800,000 people commit suicide right now every year. 800,000 people. If you do the math, that's roughly one death every 40 seconds. There's a suicide every 40 seconds. The enemy's plans are trying to go forward. But today, we're doing warfare and we're canceling the devil's plans. We bind that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. Suicide can't be around our families. Suicide can't be around our children. We bind the spirit of suicide. May you talk about the devil's plans. I'm a part of the chaplain ministry of the police department. And there's about 10 of us. And they call us when there's usually a tragedy. So I would say about, I, mean, I think it was about four months ago, I get the emergency call. It comes on my phone and I answer it. And the way it works, I answer the phone. They tell me where to go, um, who the officer is on the scene, and that's all I get. So I'm on my way to the scene, and they told me that it was a suicide victim. This was around, I think, 10 o'clock at night. So I go down. It was over there by San Bernardino High School. I pull up, and there's cars there. The coroner's van is there. I didn't get the details of who committed suicide. I, they just told me suicide, victim, we want you to go now. So I pull up, and there's cops outside talking, and I start talking to the officers. I say, officers, what's going on? I'm the chaplain on duty tonight. Um, I'm here to pray for the family. What's going on? And he goes, well, just prepare yourself, pastor. I said, what? I said, I heard it was a suicide. He goes, yeah, it's a suicide, but it's nothing we've never seen before. I said, what? He said it was a nine-year-old boy. I said, a nine-year-old boy, what do you mean? A nine-year-old boy killed himself? He goes, yeah. He hung himself in his, in his room. Him and his parents were arguing. Parents told him to go to the room, go do his homework before, before dinner time. Dinner time hits. They said, hey, get him out of the room. Let's, let's, let's get dinner. They go into the room. They find him in the room. When I went into that room... The coroner's office was there. They were taking some pictures of things. My heart just sunk. And I began to think, I said, man, nine-year-old boy? I told the officers, have you ever seen this nine-year-old? He goes, no. As far as we know, this is the youngest suicide we've ever had in this city ever. It's, we've never seen this. The youngest, the lady that she's seen, she said, the youngest I've seen was 12. I've never seen nine. I'm letting you know right now we are in spiritual warfare right now. The enemy has plans what he's trying to do. But I am here to let you know the devil's plans are canceled. I walked in the house. I said, officer, I'm a little radical. I told the officer, I need to pray. I told the officer, um, suicide just doesn't happen by accident. I told the, the, the main officer, I said, suicide um, comes with the spirit. And right now there's a spirit in this house that I need to cast out of this house. He goes, Pastor, you do what you got to do. I said, I, said, I said, officer, I might get loud. He goes, well, don't get too loud. I said, well, I don't know what's going to happen because I'm letting know right now the enemy has to leave this house. I began walking up and down that house shouting and casting out demons Cops were looking at me, and long story short, even with the enemy meant for harm, the whole family, by the end of the night, gave their life over to Jesus Christ. The spirit began to move. So how do we cancel? How do we cancel the enemy's plans? How do we declare God's will? Write this down, number one. You need to start walking in your authority. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I have authority in Jesus. Somebody at your house right now, tell somebody, say, hey, I got authority. I got supernatural powers. Anybody with me? Anybody got supernatural powers? 
I could tell a demon to flee and he has to flee. Not because of Robert, because of the power of the Holy Ghost. You have to know the authority that you have. Look at the scripture, Luke 10, 19. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. I have given you authority over every demon. Look at this scripture, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. This scripture describes a mountain. We can speak to a mountain and we can move a mountain. Maybe you're facing a situation that's big right now. It's large. It's a mountain situation. You could cast that mountain into the sea. You could cast that situation away from your family. Why? God has given us authority. Look at Mark eleven twenty three. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea. And it will happen. But you must really believe it. It will happen and have no doubt in your heart. We have the authority to tell a mountain, be lifted up, cast into the sea. First scripture says in Luke, we have authority over every demonic power. You know, my mom, she really got this. If I could, one thing about my mom, she, she, she knew this. She knew her authority. Man, I, me standing here today and preaching and teaching, if it wasn't for my mom uh, believing in this, canceling and declaring, I wouldn't be here. There was many times the devil tried to take me out. He tried to try to kill me. I remember this particular time. I was just a mess. I was in college, um, not doing good, dating people I shouldn't be dating, and just doing dumb stuff. Anybody ever done dumb stuff? I don't want to feel alone. Women's home, anybody ever done dumb stuff? All right, thank you. I don't feel alone. <laughs> hey, at home, you ever did something dumb? Raise your hand, okay? I can't see you, but yeah, all right. I believe there's somebody raising their hands. I was doing just dumb stuff. Wasn't thinking straight. And I was in college, I was trying to make some extra money, and I started a little landscaping business, cutting grass. I knew how to cut grass, that's why I can make some money. During that time of my life, for some reason, well, I know now, the devil was trying to kill me. There were several times I'd be driving, and I would just knock out fast asleep. During this period of a time, I remember I was driving one day on the freeway, knocked out, one o'clock in the morning, at a place where I shouldn't have been, one o'clock in the morning, fell asleep, I wake up hitting the side medium. Wake up. Then there's one day that really kind of changed my life forever as far as the, the power of God and canceling out the devil's plans. I was driving my truck, got the lawn equipment in the back. I'm headed towards the house. Didn't know 5,000 miles away, my mom was praying for me. Didn't know. I'm driving my truck. I'll never forget this day as long as I live. I'm driving this truck. I'm going down Arrow Boulevard. Anybody know about Fontana a little bit? Fontana. I'm going down Arrow Boulevard, and I'm about to get to Sierra. Do you know where that's at? Oh, you know Fontana. Okay, you've lived there. You go down Arrow, and I remember I was about probably, probably about 20 yards away from Sierra. I'm driving my truck, and all I remember is seeing the, the kind of the corner, Arrow and Sierra, and I fall asleep. I fall asleep. I wake up. I don't even know the time period. I think it was about, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes, five minutes. I don't know what the time period was. I woke up on the side of a street. Real story. I woke up on the side of a street. My truck was on the side and my truck was in park. I wake up. My truck's in park and I'm sitting on the street. I'm not on, I'm not on Arrow and Sierra anymore. I thought I was in a dream. I start to hit myself, wake up, Robert, wake up. You're in Fontana. You're in Fontana. Nope. I'm on the middle of a street, a bunch of palm trees, and I see warehouses. True story. I said, where am I at? So I get out of the truck. I see a diesel guy over there. He, he gets out of his truck. I says, sir, I don't know if I'm in a twilight zone. I'm in a dream. I said, sir, where, where are we? What city are we in? He goes, what's wrong with you? What do you mean what city are we in? I said, sir, I don't know where I'm at right now. He looked at me, he goes, man, you're taking some kind of drugs. What's wrong with you? 
I said, sir, I don't know where I'm at. True story. And I, he goes, you're in Redlands. God literally translated, transported my truck, little Chevy S10, white S10 with lawn equipment. He transferred me from Fontana all the way to Redlands. I was over there by California Street by the Walmart, palm trees and warehouses. As he's telling me I'm in Redlands, I get a phone call. Guess who it is? Mama. <laughs> Robert, are you okay? I've been canceling demons off of you for the last 15 minutes. Are you okay, Robert? I've been canceling death. God told me that death was trying to come to you today. Are you okay, Robert? She's crying and she's screaming. I said, Mom, I'm okay. God just transported my truck from Fontana to Redlands because my mama started to cancel the demons that were after my life. That day, the devil was trying to kill me. And because of a praying mama that said, you know what? I have the authority. Someone shout, I have the authority. Now you got to say it again like you mean it. I have authority. Because of my mama, she knew this. And she canceled the devil's plans that day. She canceled them. And here I am today preaching in 2020 because of a person. Because of a person who God used to cancel and declare. I want you to write this down. How do we activate this authority? We just read two scriptures, Luke and Mark. We have authority. How many believe they have authority? How do we activate this authority? Write this down. Start declaring God's will over your situation. How do we activate this authority God has given us? Start declaring God's will over your situation. How do we know God's will? How do we find out God's will? God's will is in the word of God. Where do we find God's will? In the word of God. Start declaring. Canceling the devil's plans and declaring. Say, Pastor, do I have to get that aggressive? We do right now. The devil is being very aggressive right now. He's attacking our family. He's attacking our children. With everything he's got. He's attacking your mind. Some of you guys right now, you're taking, God is showing me right now, you're watching me right now at home. You've been taking medication right now just to go to bed. You cannot sleep at night. I don't know who you are. You're watching right now at home. You cannot sleep. Your mind is racing, and now you're trying medication to go to bed. I cancel, right? whoever you are, I cancel. Maybe it's more than one. I cancel that plan of the devil to keep you up, to keep you tormented. You're even getting a few nightmares. I bind that and rebuke it in Jesus' name. I declare peace over your life. I declare peace over your house, your mind. I declare peace right now. See, declaration, what does it mean to declare? Write this down. Women's home, you're at home. Write this down. What, is it, what does that word mean, declaration, to declare something? This is what it means. It means a formal announcement. What does it mean? Formal it means a formal announcement of the beginning of something new taking place. It's a formal announcement of the beginning of something new taking place. How many want something new in their life? How many want something new in your family? How many want something new with your children? It's a formal announcement. I'm making an announcement. I'm going to declare right now, some of your kids are not serving God. I'm going to declare right now that your kids will serve Jesus Christ. Your kids will serve the Lord. If you have a kid right now that's not serving God, I want you to practice it right now. Say, I cancel the plans of the devil off my children. And I declare my kids will serve the Lord. As far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I cancel the demons off my children. I cancel the influence of demons off my children. I declare that my kids will be on fire for God. I declare victory over my kids. I declare freedom over my kids. For who the Son 
sets free is free indeed. Devil let loose of my children. I cancel the plans of the devil. In Jesus' name I pray. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. It's time for us to get aggressive with the enemy. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12 says this. I, mean, I could feel, how many feel the Holy, Holy Ghost right now, the presence of God? Right now at your house, that's a spirit moving. Some of you ladies and family, you started crying right now when we started talking about your kids. That's the spirit of God. It's time for us to get aggressive with the enemy. Matthew eleven twelve. 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. The enemy is not sleeping. Enemy is going, the, the demons are going 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. Try and, try and conjugate plans and trying to see how they're going to attack your family. How did, you know, someone asked me a long time ago, how many demons are there, pastor? We don't know. The only numeric answer that we have in the Bible concerning that, the Bible says that one third of the angels followed Lucifer. Right? That's the only numeric amount that we have in the Bible that describes how many demons. But that doesn't give us a definite answer. One third is one third of what? One third of the demons. Now, I could, you could probably do some math where you're at. I'm not good at math. You could do it. We've cast out demons before in this church. Um, there was one person we cast out 15 demons. 15 demons came out of a person. So right now, there's what, over 6 billion or 7 billion people on planet Earth. Let's say there's 6.5 billion people on planet Earth. If 15 demons were attacking one person, you would have to multiply 15 demons, 15 times 6.5 billion. If you want a little bit of an answer how many demons there are, trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of demons, those are the demons that are trying to attack our family. But I'm letting you know, we got to take it by force right now. We got to say, devil, you let loose. I love this statement. Write this down. If you allow the enemy to have the final word, if you allow the enemy to have the final word, you will experience his plan. If you allow the enemy to have the final word in a situation with your children, with your family, with your finances, you'll experience his plan. See, we got to cancel the devil's plan, cancel it null and void, and then we declare God's will. We used to have the saying in the car business. I, this applies to now. He who has the last words, win. He who has the last words, win. We see that with Jesus, don't we? Jesus was fasting. The devil came trying to tempt him. And what did Jesus say? It is written. The devil would say something. Jesus, it is written. Whoever has the last word wins. Don't let the enemy have the last words on your family. Don't let the enemy have the last words on your marriage. Maybe you're watching this right now and you're thinking, Pastor, it's too late. It's too late. We're going through it. We're getting ready for a divorce right now. My marriage is not going to make it. I'm going to let you know right now. It's never too late for Jesus. It's never too late for Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus could turn around the situation any, any time. He could do it. It's never too late. I love this scripture in John chapter 11. You could turn it just really fast. If not, just jot it down. In John chapter 11, it really gives us a good example of Jesus hearing something, what the people are saying, and then he starts to declare something else. Look at John chapter 11, if you have your Bible, starting in verse 1. Look at this quick story, and I'm going to end with the last, the last point. John 11, a man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick, so the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so the Son of God will receive glory from this. Really quick, here's Jesus going about his life. He gets a message that his friend is sick named Lazarus. The message goes out and says, Jesus, you got to come to the house fast. Mary's Lazarus, he's going he's gonna to die you know Mary and Martha, Lazarus, their brother's going to die. 
And Jesus makes kind of a profound statement because Jesus already knows the present, he knows the, he knows the past, and he knows the future. And he tells him right off the bat, his death is not going to be the last of him. I'm pretty sure the message probably said, wait, I didn't say he died, Jesus. I said that he's sick. Jesus was already seeing the future. Now, if you read on in this story, look at verse 17. Jesus already declared that he's not going to end in death like that. He already declared it. Look at John chapter 11, verse 17. Go down to verse 17. When Jesus finally arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had been in his grave for four days. So Jesus waits. He waits two days. He gets four days. He shows up to Lazarus' house, and Lazarus is dead. I have news for you. It doesn't matter what dead situation that's, that you're facing right now. God can bring it back to life. It doesn't matter if it's your business right now, if it's your finances are dead right now, if it's your freedom right now, if it's your relationships right now. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. So the people tell Jesus, Jesus, you're too late. Lazarus is dead you should have came four days ago, Jesus. Jesus said, go down to verse 25. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. He goes, I'm the resurrection and the life. You guys are saying that Lazarus is dead, but I'm saying I'm about to raise Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus said, that even you and I will do greater things that Jesus has done. <sighs> Does that mean you and I could raise people from the dead? Yes. Does that mean me and you could pray over somebody that has cancer and cancer could leave? Yes. How many believe they have authority? I love this. Jesus said, crowd, get out the way. Get out the way. I need to show off my father for a second. You guys think Lazarus is dead. I'm raising him up right now. Because what you declare, there's death and life in the tongue. You guys are saying Lazarus is dead. I already told you from the beginning, his death is, he wasn't going to end, he wasn't going to die like this. And look what Jesus did. 1143, Jesus shouted, Lazarus! Lazarus! He's in the tomb. The dude is dead. But Jesus gets aggressive exclamation point. Lazarus! Come out! And I could just see that tomb begin to raise. And a dead man came to life again. And the Bible says they unwrapped him because they used to wrap all the dead people with uh, linen and a cloth. They said, man, unwrap them. They unwrapped Lazarus and he's there now walking. I'm here to let you know right now, God is resurrecting some things that have died in your life right now. God has resurrected some things that have died in your life. And God is saying, I'm not done yet. I, all I need for you is to declare my will. All I need for you is to declare the word of God. Jesus is just waiting for your declaration to change your situation. Write that down. Jesus is just waiting for your declaration so he could change that situation. So man, Lazarus comes up. How do we end the enemy's plans? We cancel. We start walking in authority. We start audibly speaking against. Here's a last thing. Write this down. How do we end the enemy's plans? How do we end them? How do we declare God's will? Write this down. We need to repent from all of our compromise. Compromise gives access to the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10.10. 10, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and to destroy. But my purpose is to give them rich and satisfying life. We have to repent of compromise. See, repentance closes the door and stops the enemy's access in our lives. I'm going to say that again. Repentance closes the door and stops the enemy's access in our lives. There's some things today, as we come to a close, there's some things today you and I, we need to repent of. If you're a parent how many parents, raise your hand at home, women home, at home, if you're a parent. Parents, this is a big responsibility for us. There's something called generational curses. There's things that our kids and grandkids are facing now because of things that we haven't repented of. You can read the scripture later. You could jot it down for time. Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6. It says that the children will be punished 
because of the sin of the parents. There's some things our kids are going through right now because as parents, we still haven't repented of, we haven't got rid of some things yet. And today we're gonna repent and we're gonna cancel all the devil's plans. And this scripture here, you've heard it, I'm gonna declare it over you, over our city, over our church, over our country, over this nation, uh, over California. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We're learning today how to cancel the enemy's plans, declare God's will. A lot of us right now, that authority is lacking because there's some things in our lives we need to repent of. There's open doors right now to the devil and that's how the enemy's coming into your home. Say it again. There's some open doors in your home right now. You're wondering, how the, how's the enemy attacking my kids? How's the enemy stealing this and doing that? There could be some open doors because of things we haven't repented of. So everybody here, the women's home, you can bow your head and close your eyes. You're at your house right now. If you want to accept Jesus as your savior, if you have some things right now you need to repent of, now is the time. Not tomorrow, not next week. Today is a day of salvation. If you want forgiveness of your sins, you be saying, Pastor, yeah, I got some things right now that I need to repent of. There's some things that I've been hiding in secret, but I want to repent. If that is you, along with the women's home, I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, I repent of all my sins. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, all the wrong that I've done. Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. I will not pass down generational curses. I declare today that I will pass down generational blessings, generational righteousness. I cancel every assignment that the devil has on me and my family. I declare today that I am a disciple of Jesus. I will walk with Jesus all the days of my life. I am saved. I am born again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We repent of our sins. We start to let, let stuff go. You guys cancel and declare this week. I want you to cancel some things and I want you to declare God's will. Man, we love you guys. If you just got saved for the first time, I'm going to igotsaved.com. It should pop up on your screen right now. igotsaved.com. And we'll let you know further instructions of how to get discipled. Um, we have some classes here called The Next Step. We'd love to get you involved in those things. We love you. God bless you. Cancel and declare God's will this week. Have a great week, you guys.